quickly. Number four, almost finished. Number four, you want to forget your past offenses, you need strong relationships. You need some strong relationships in your life. Let me explain something to you. Most of us, the thing that hurt us most about the offenses of our past is not really what that person did to you, but it's what that person did to you, you think, says about you. In other words, it's <laughs> when, 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 when they left you, what, what you began to think is that that says that I am not good enough. And when they used to tell you that you're fool, fool, it made you think, well, maybe I am a fool. And when they disrespected you, all, you, you just began to think, well, maybe I'm not worthy of respect. So not so much what they did, but very often it's what, what they did says about you. And a lot, for a lot of us, that is what we remember. Some of you can't even remember what the person did to you. But you remember how you feel. You know how you feel whenever you sit there. You don't remember the feeling. Because those are the things we forget. But it's, it's what it says. That some of us have has lodged in our psyche. And in our heart, God says you need to set yourself free from that. <laughs> I had a friend of mine, and she had a strategy. When she was in a relationship, this is growing up, she's in a relationship, right? And the, the guy hurt her, disappointed her, broke her heart. All she would do is two weeks later, she would just show up with a new guy. How many of you know what I'm saying? New, because, what I'm saying is that two weeks ago, she's in front of me bawling. Ah, you know, he hurt me and I hate him and I kind of don't like myself and I'm ugly and I'm all of these kind of things and she's broken down. Two weeks later, she's walking around. She, I said, what happened to you? I've got to find a new man. What? I, I found a new man and what, what happens when... When we rebound, somebody say rebound. What happens when we have an opportunity to rebound is that we, we, we are redefined. So him used to say ugly, but this one saying you're pretty. This one used to say you're not good enough. This one is saying you're more than enough. This one used to point out all your flaws. This one is saying but you're perfect. And I'm just telling you, sometimes you can rebound and become redefined. Because... A new, strong relationship can redefine you. I mean, she forgot about this guy. She, she just forget about him. She don't want him no more. She don't need him because she had somebody else. God is saying, I have strong relationships for you. I have some strong relationships in place that will redefine you. The relationship that he's calling you to, the relationship that will cause you to forget anybody else has said about you and any definition somebody else gives to you is a relationship with God himself. Man, I'm telling you, you have daddy issues? You need to, you need to rebound and spend more time with God. Meet the real father. A perfect father. A faithful father. God is saying... Come into relationship with me. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for you to be defined not by what you have done or what somebody else has done and said to you. It's time for you to be defined by what God has done for you. This is why Easter is so important for you to be in church and talk about what God did for you so that you can be defined, so you can know your worth, know your value, and forget all of what those Bad mind people said about you and those fools said about you. Those people that didn't deserve you. I'm just saying, God is saying the relationship, the strong relationship that you need that will cause you to forgive and forget is a relationship with God. God is saying, come into relationship with me and I will redefine you. Who's ready for a relationship, a deeper relationship with God? 
Number five, we're going to do six. Number five, somebody say purpose. Now, I had a, a really tricky conversation a little while ago with a young lady that was sitting with me telling me about her past abuses. And she's telling me about how, how they took advantage of her, how she was taken advantage of, and what they did, and, and how, it, how, how bad it was. And I'm sitting there, and I'm getting lower and lower. But as she's talking, I started to get the sense that she's, she's kind of celebrating this thing. And I'm saying, isn't she talking about that horrific act? Or the repeat horrific acts that happened to her when she was a little girl, when she was a teenager. But she's kind of thankful for it. And I'm there and saying, I don't understand what, what, what is she experiencing. It's like she's telling this bad story, but it's, it's like it's good now. And I'm saying, I don't understand what's, what's going on. What I, She began to explain to me that the reason why she's celebrating now, the reason why she's thankful now is because of all that she learned and because of how strong it has made her and because of all of the purpose that she has found attached to that thing that was so negative. She said, you don't understand. It, 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 it is as if uh, God has turned my wounds into weapons. And my scars into signs. God has turned my pain into power. And I'm sitting down there like, all right, all right, I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that if you want to forgive, if you want to be free, if you want to be free to the point where you forget then you need to ask God to show you purpose. God will show you purpose after you've forgiven. He can't show you the purpose in it if you don't give it to him. What I'm saying is, if you would give God your future, God has a way of rewriting your past. In other words, at the end of your journey or your, your now statement is going to sound scriptural and you're going to say, you know, actually, Pastor Chris, what the enemy meant for evil, God has now turned into good. And you're going to say something like, my God causes all things to work its way out for good. For those that have given God their future, those that are called to purpose, I'm telling you that in purpose, you're not only going to find peace, you're going to find power. So what, what, what I believe some people do is they run away from their feelings and run away from their pain in order to find peace. And God is saying, no, run towards the pain, look for the purpose, and you're going to find power and peace. Some of you just don't believe me. It hasn't, it hasn't turned for you yet. I'm here to declare that what the enemy meant for evil in your life, God will use it for good. And that I know that my God will cause all things, the good, the bad, the disgusting, the ugly in your life and cause it to be good in your life. I'm here to tell you that the most heinous things, the most horrific things that have happened to you in your life, God will use it to embarrass the enemy and bring you joy and bring you purpose, and bring you strength. And you, and therein, ladies and gentlemen, you would have forgotten what that person, the, the, the feeling of what that person did to you because you would have risen way above it in purpose. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, find purpose, and you're going to forget what they did. Lastly, You want to forget, forgive and forget, you have to be strong enough. A little while ago, 
God told me something by way of revelation. I just felt this. I was driving one day, and he said, I was processing with my God all of the offenses I was going through. Right? Uh, it's one thing to just drive on the road in Jamaica and have to deal with all the offenses. I'm going to be honest. Uh, not true. I mean, there's, they're offending in left, right, and center on the road. It's another thing to be a pastor. And, and people are really mean to pastors. Some of you are thinking, me, Pastor Chris, I'm so, so nice to you. But even as a pastor, you go through a lot of offenses. People don't understand. And God said to me, he said, you are strong enough to take the hits. You're, he said, Christopher, you're strong enough. And I said, you know what, you're right. I am strong enough. I'm strong enough to be offended by you. I'm, God told me that I'm strong enough to be offended by you. No, no, don't all come at the same time. I can take you one, one. I'm learning this thing. But God says, you're strong enough. He says, I'm strong enough. He says, nothing that they do can kill you. They can't kill you. They can't stop you. Offenses, I mean, not the people. Their sins can't stop you. Other people's sins can't stop you. Evil can't kill you. The most it can do is slow you down if you allow it. And I believe God is talking to some of you today. Because some of you have allowed the offenses of others to slow you down. They don't have the power to stop you. But you for sure are on pause right now. And you, 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 are, you stop and you fuss and you complain too often. And it is messing with your flow. Your flow of leadership and the flow of life. Your flow of joy is cut off because you are choosing to stop. And complain when God is saying you are strong enough to keep going. Isn't that good news? God is saying you are strong enough to love. God said, no, Christopher, you can still love them even if they offend you. You are strong enough to love. What I'm saying is, you go out on the road and the first person that cuts you off don't act like you never know that somebody was going to cut you off. How many of you live in Jamaica and you drive in Jamaica? Don't look at me like, what is he talking about? I'm just saying, no matter where you live in Jamaica, you are guaranteed an offense. So when you go out on the road, don't go out on the road and then, and then act like you didn't know somebody was going to do something to offend you. Before you leave the house, prepare yourself to love. Because you know that offense is coming. I'm telling you that offense is coming. And you need to prepare yourself. That's why I say, God, why are you telling me you're strong enough? He says, because you're not acting like it. You're acting surprised every time somebody does. Prepare yourself for trials. Prepare yourself for offenses. The moment you hit that road, prepare yourself. So what I do now is I manage myself and I just love. So when the taxi man is coming and he's cutting me off, I just say, hey, go on. Just go ahead. Would you like to go too? Right? You do know that what you did was very unreasonable and wicked. But go ahead and try. It's not like anybody can see me. You can't see me on the road to see Pastor Chris there. Oh my God, he's so he's strong enough to love. It's just a decision. I mean, I can, I can go out on the road and act troubled and defensive all day while I'm driving. Urgh. Or I can say, I'm strong enough to love. Somebody say, I'm strong enough to love. At Covenant Church of Pittsburgh, turn somebody else and say, I'm strong enough to love. Covenant Church of Pittsburgh, a couple of years ago, Pastor Mike, uh, one of the, the nicest men in, in Pittsburgh, big guy, he kind of reminds me of Santa Claus. White guy, um, he's bald-headed, has a white beard, kind of nice and round, and a, and a little, you know, tall, about this height, and he's nice and round. And Pastor Mike, he used, to, he used to appreciate me, right? He came on a mission trip to Jamaica and all of that. He just really appreciated Pastor Chris. And we used to have a time in that service, just like we have in this service, where we walk around and we greet everybody. And Pastor Mike used to look for me every time it was meet and greet. And Pastor Mike would be like, where's Pastor Chris? Where's Pastor Chris? He'd greet people, where's Pastor Chris? And then he would say, Pastor Chris, come here, Pastor Chris. And I used to just, uh, he used to look for me. Every, I couldn't get away from him. And he'd like, come here, Pastor Chris. And I was like, oh, okay. Right? 
Because him kind of boy me up. I'm just saying, here's what I'm saying. Pastor Mike, being taller than me and having a little bit of a, a, lot, a little bit more weight, he would come here, Pastor Chris, and he would grab me. And he would lift me up and say, I love you, Pastor Chris. But uh, picture me, strong black Jamaican man, in the arms of a burly white man. It just wasn't my thing. It didn't make me feel good about myself. When this man gripped me so and lift me up, and I'm like this, and my two of my feet are flapping. I'm like, and his beard is rubbing on me. And he put me back down, and I used to just, like, oh. I mean, I like you, but, I mean, so, you see, what you, I'm talking every Sunday. Pastor, where's Pastor Chris? I'm about to hug Pastor Chris. And Pastor Mike used to hug the life out of me. And then I got revelation. I said, well, you can't live so. During the meet and greet, you're meeting, greeting, looking for Pastor Mike, walking the other way. That's not how you should live. You know, it's like he's this bad guy. He's an offender in my life. And I have to walk. I can't live my life to walk the other way. And you understand what I'm saying? So God said to me, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, if he's hugging me, what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm going to out hug him. And then the next Sunday, them start the song. You know, welcome, welcome. And they start, the, and I say, where is Pastor Mike? You understand? Where Pastor Mike there? And I look around and I greet people and high five and hug. And I say, where Pastor Mike? And he said, and he said, Pastor Chris. I said, no, Pastor Mike. And I run up to Pastor Mike. You understand? And I went, pull up my pants. No, I had to get my foot in. Couldn't jump. Right? So I get my foot in. Spread my legs a little bit. Right? You understand? So I had my, and I went up on my toes a little bit. Lean forward. When he lifted his hand up around me, I go so. All right? And I'm just like this. Promise. And I went like this, and I stretched my hands around. And my, got my two middle fingers to lock. Because he's a, and they locked, ladies and gentlemen, and I, and I squee squeezed. <laughs> you understand? Know when I was finished with him, he said, All right. I'm just saying, there comes a point in your life where you're either going to be hugged or out hug. Yeah. Where you're either going to be offended or out offend somebody. And it's time for some of you to stop just taking the offenses and say, no, I, I'm strong enough to out love that person. I'm strong enough to show love even though I don't like what they're coming with. And I refuse to walk, walk the other way every time I sit. I refuse to cringe every time I hear the, the name Mike or see Santa Claus. I, I, refuse to be, I, I refuse to be affected by offense. I am going to, I, I'm going to offend offense. I am going to be on the offensive and I'm going to outlove my enemy. I'm going to outlove anybody who is coming at me. How many of you? When God says, love your friend, love your family, love your friend, love your neighbor, love your enemy, he's talking about outloving them. How can you love your enemy? He's saying, outlove them. In other words, the more that they come at you with negative, is the more you must come at them with positive. God is saying, you are strong enough today. To not be running from things, but be running to things with love. Something you need to understand today, I'm going to close with this, is that Jesus didn't run from the cross. Jesus didn't run away from his beating. Jesus ran towards it. He found the most powerful way to love us. He found the most amazing way to love his enemy. And it was by giving his life for them. The word of God says that they didn't take his life. Don't get it twisted. No man takes God's life. No man taketh his life. They couldn't take Jesus' life. If, if you read the story, especially in the book of John, it says when the soldiers came up to him before Jesus was ready to give it, they came up to him, then touched him, and the word of God says they bounced back and they fell on the floor. I'm just saying, before Jesus was ready to go, don't touch him. 
But Jesus said, no man taketh my life. I give it away. This is how I'm going to love. I choose to love. I choose to give. I choose to forgive. Because I'm strong enough. Can you put that picture back up of Jesus on the cross? Because here's where we get it twisted. We see the picture of Jesus. We see a man battered and bruised and beaten. And we think that this is the image of weakness. That this is the image of, 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 of lowness and, and nothingness. But that is the image of strength. That is a picture of a man that loved you enough to take the beating. That is a picture of a man who loved you enough to take all of what you could throw at him. He took all of our sin to the cross because of love. That's not weakness. That is strength. And God is saying to you today, you are strong enough to give your life through forgiveness. You are strong enough to love others. Go ahead and stand with me. Jesus is saying today that it is love that took me to that cross. My love brought me to the cross. My love for you, ladies and gentlemen, is what took me to the cross. Jesus is saying, my love for you, it, it didn't blind me. You know, we like to say love is blind. Jesus says, my love caused me to separate and to see you separate from your sin and your sicknesses. He's saying, my love for you caused me to wait and causes me to wait for you to get to amendment and true repentance. Jesus is saying, I waited on some of you. Some of you, he's saying today, I've been waiting. Jesus is saying, I'm, I love you so much, I'm here to, cause it, to help you to grow and to outgrow offense. I love you so much, I am here, God is saying, to redefine you. I love you so much that I will take all of what has happened to you and turn it to good. Jesus is saying, they didn't take me to the cross against my will. They didn't drag me to the cross. I was in control of myself the whole time. I was in control of the situation. I was strong the whole time. It was my strength that kept me up there for six hours. My love for you kept me on that cross. My love for you caused me to go the distance to the point of my last breath. My love for you Jesus is saying today, I forgive you. Father, forgive them. And I'd like you to do the same for others, especially the undeserved, even if them don't come and ask you for forgiveness. You are strong enough to love. Hey, thank you so much for watching us here. Go for God Family Church on YouTube. Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button to ensure that you get all of what is new from Go for God Family Church and to ensure that you don't miss anything.